Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and today is the launch of all the AIB cards when it comes to RTX 3080. So let's take a look at the MSI Gaming X Trio version. Let's do this. The IQ H150i Elite Capellix from Corsair. Let's take a look. so bright, these Capellix LEDs, really, really, are going to outshine the competition. I should click the link in the description to find out more. So, yesterday saw the launch of the 3080 Founders Edition cards from Nvidia. Now, I just want to sort of get something off my chest a little bit. You probably saw we didn't actually get a card. I know, disappointing times, we are due to get one, but it's all about the AIBs today. And probably one of the most important ones is going to be the one that I've got here, which is the Gaming X Trio. Now, when you think about it, Founders Edition isn't actually a reference card, very much like kind of this isn't a reference card, as far as I know. The Founders Edition is kind of this weird V-shaped PCB. It's like Nvidia are actually trying to be their own AIB or AIC or add-in board partner or whatever you want to call it. But to me personally, I'm going to kind of see that as a reference card because I don't actually believe that Nvidia are releasing their own version of a reference card. So it's either Founders Edition or MSI, ASUS, Gigabyte and so forth. So what we've got here is the Gaming X Trio and let's kind of have a little bit of a history lesson first. You may remember this little card, which is the 1080 Ti Gaming X Trio. It looked great at the time. Compared to that, it kind of looks a little bit cheap and plasticky now. And then even moving on kind of beyond that was the 20 series Gaming X Trio. So they've kind of kept the design very, very similar, but they have changed a few things up. I mean, size wise, it's pretty much on par. So what can we sort of take away from that? I guess it's the whole, you know, tried and tested, tried and true kind of method. If it's not broke, don't fix it. And I think that's maybe the route that MSI have gone with with this. The Gaming X Trios, yes, they are generally a little bit more expensive. I haven't actually got full on concrete pricing on this at the moment, but it goes to show that, you know, you get a lot more for your money. So you get the triple fan cooler. You do get, in the grand scheme of things, a pretty large graphics card. So when it comes to the size, you do get a lot of kind of, you know, for what you actually pay for. It actually comes in at 323 millimeters, which is, you know, a decent, let's say, large-ish kind of size. But I don't think you're really going to struggle with any major mid-tower case out on the market. You may have seen the 4000 series from Corsair that was released a couple of days ago. It could actually fit very, very large graphics cards. I think it was up to 360 mil. So you're not going to have a problem with this whatsoever. Obviously, when it comes to the thickness, it is... Uh, it's a pretty thick boy. It's nothing like the XFX fit cards that came out a couple of years ago, but still on that kind of thicker side. It actually comes in at 140 millimeters wide and 56 millimeters high. Now, let's talk about power delivery. What do we actually get? Well, this is where things get really interesting because the Founders card had that new quirky kind of 12 pin connector. This has actually got three 8 pin power connectors, which is a step up from the 2080 Ti um, Gaming X Trio. And it is delivering 320 watts worth of power. That's through the PCI Express power connectors, as well as the supplementary kind of 75 watt power that you actually get from the slot itself. Other than that, compared to the Founders Edition, everything is pretty much the same. We get 10 gig of GDDR6X, like we'd expect, which is going to be great for 4K gaming. That's where that extra kind of memory and the extra bandwidth really comes into play. And 8K, which we have got some results for. We didn't test it in every game because, frankly, it just wasn't possible we had some major issues with testing over the last couple of days as well. And really trying to even make this video was right down to the wire. Um, RGB wise, yeah, you get some. So we get a little bit here, we get a little bit there and we get this little bar on top. They haven't really gone too crazy with it, especially when you look at some of the cards that are coming out from other brands like the Palette Game Rocker, I think it is, or the Game Ready and some of the ones even from EVGA. Didn't really expect them to go that crazy on RGB. This is kind of quite subtle. And I mean, if it's sitting in your case like this, yes, you're going to see a little bit here. Moving around to the back as well, we do get this kind of injection molded ABS. At first, it did look like metal, but it's actually got some flex to it. Very similar to what we've seen on motherboards as of late. Kind of looks like metal, but it's really not. I'm sure there's a reasoning behind this. Maybe it's so that it doesn't scratch for one, not being metal. And secondly, maybe the whole reason is that it's actually better at dissipating heat than metal. Who knows? I'm sure MSI have kind of got their reasoning and everything behind it. So the only other RGB on here is the MSI logo up here, and that's pretty much it. So what really differs this from a Founders Edition card? Well, it all comes down to the specs. Now, when I say specs, I should have made that a little bit clearer. Spec. 
So compared to the Founders Edition card, this is actually the same when it comes to the memory speed. It's the same when it comes to the core clock. It all comes down to the boost clock. On the Founders Edition, we're looking at 1710 megahertz on the, uh, on the boost clock, whereas on this, we're looking at 1815. So we have a little bit of an increase, but a lot of that comes down to power delivery. And generally speaking, when you're looking at cards now, People will know if they know me, I'm a firm believer in that overclocking is a little bit of a dying art. And you're not actually gonna see any overclocking results in this video, I'm afraid to say, uh, purely because one, we didn't have the time. Secondly, I'd rather slap a water block on it and see what it can really do. When it comes to the actual air cooling element, element of it and kind of you know boosting and overclocking, that's where this is gonna shine because it does have this beefy cooler on here that means that the power limit is gonna be able to boost that little bit longer because the temperatures are a little bit lower. And that's kind of the simplest way of explaining how it actually works. So yeah, enough of me rambling on. What do we wanna look at? We wanna look at performance results. 1080, 1440, 4K, and 8K as well. And yes, we did it with ray tracing, DLSS, and a little sprinkle of both. So let's run them benchmarks. <laughs>
So there we have it. It's been a long couple of days or close to actually a week of testing just this card and re kind of jigging all of our test bench methodology. You can check that video out as well uh, because we did put a video up about our test bench specifically for this and how we've moved over to X570. There's still a lot of features that are due to be coming like RTX IO where the graphics card is really going to be able to harness the speed and performance of talking to a Gen 4 PCI Express NVMe drive. So there is, I guess, a lot more to come. But what can we take away from the actual results? Well, in the grand scheme of things, because we did compare 1080 Ti as well as 2080 Ti, we threw a 2080 Super in there as well. Honestly, believe that if you are on 20 series and you're gaming at a lower resolution, which I can't see why you would be, there's not really much of a reason to move up to this. This card seems like it is firmly planted at 4K. Having the extra memory over the likes of the 2080 Super um, definitely sort of, you know, gives you that extra performance at 4K. At 8K, yes, we could see some performance increases there as well, but I kind of feel like 8K isn't as fully refined as what it should be. And again, I think that's something that's going to come later on. Driver updates, even Microsoft updates through Windows. But at the moment, yes, I mean, it's a bit of a no-brainer. You're not going to go out and buy a 2080 Ti for more money than what you'd buy a 3080 for. And that's kind of at the time of filming where things still are. I'm still seeing prices of £1,200, $1,600 for a 2080 Ti. Then you have this, which is going to be around, let's say, £750, $800, somewhere around that. I haven't got concrete pricing on it, so I'm only speculating at the moment based on what I've seen, but prices are subject to change when the cards are actually released. But I feel that, you know, we've kind of gone back to the pricing that we saw in the 10 series. Kind of was at a certain level, 20 series came out and it went up. Now it's gone back down to 10 series and everyone's kind of sitting there going, this is actually really, really good value. Yes, it is. But does that mean 20 series was bad value? Only you guys can really decide on that. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Uh, would you go for this card? Would you go for a Founders Edition card? The only reason I can really see someone going for a reference style card is to potentially take off the cooler and put a water block on it. But you're always going to pay a premium for something like this with a triple fan cooler. Azusa going to be the same with the Strix. EVJ are going to be the same with the FTW3 or whatever they're going to be calling it. Either way, I really, really like this card if you're gaming at 4K. Any other resolution below that and you're already on a 20 series, maybe this isn't the one to go for. If you're on a 9 series, wow. If you're on a 10 series, yeah, there's going to be a big boost. But you got to remember, 3070 is right around the corner as well. So uh, yeah, make an educated decision and go with what's going to happen then, I guess. Until next time, you know what to do. And I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.